you put so much work into your library programs and then no one shows up like not a single person that is heartbreaking how can you prevent that from happening again there are some things you can do to make sure people attend your library programs i'm going to share those tips with you in this episode of the library marketing show welcome back everyone my name is angela hirsch from the blog superlibrarymarketing.com. Head there and click on the Library Marketing Show tab to ask a question that I can answer in a future episode or to nominate your library or another library for kudos. A kudos nomination has come in and we are going to give that away later in this episode. First, I have to share with you my heartbreak. I was getting ready for a shower this morning. I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see a tweet from someone with the handle B and her books. She works for the Milwaukee Public Library, I believe. She put together this really, it looks so cool. It was a um, Black History Month book buffet program. I'm gonna put a link to her tweet down in the show description if you're watching on YouTube or in, uh, the comments in LinkedIn if you're watching on LinkedIn. Anyway, she put all this effort into this program and then nobody showed up and it just killed me because I know how much work she put into that. Um, she got a bunch of support from the library Twitter community. So that was great. But I'm standing there thinking, OK, what can I do to help and help other libraries who have had this similar experience? Because if you read her Twitter thread, you'll see it's not uncommon. So I have a couple of tips to help you get people to your library programs. First of all, I think we're at a point post pandemic where we can really start to reimagine what programming is at our library. And the first piece of that is to make sure that we are creating programs that are worth our community's time. That might not mean programs you want to create. That might mean programs your community needs. And there's a big difference between those two. The only way to figure that out is to ask your community. Two, uh, two question survey to send out. What programs would you like to see at the library or would be helpful to you? I would suggest that you actually give your survey respondents a list of options. Just from my own personal experience, open-ended questions can be really intimidating for some folks. They may not even have a notion of what kind of programs the library offers. So give them some categories to choose from. Maybe they can rank them. Maybe they can select three. The next question I want you to ask is for format. How long do you want your program to be and where do you want it to be? Maybe they only want programs on Zoom. Maybe programs at a certain branch would be more convenient for your community. Maybe programs on the weekend, that's the only time they have to go to a program at a library. Ask those questions of your community so you can create programs they want and schedule them in the time and place that they want it. When we respond to what our community wants, we know they respond back and they'll be more likely to attend. The next thing I want you to do is enact, if you don't do this already, registration for all of your programs. The reason we do this is we want to get the name and email address of anyone who wants to respond or who wants to attend the program. Now, walk-ins are great, and I know there are people in your community who don't want to give you their email, and that's fine. But ask. What happens when you ask? Most people will give you their email, and then you can send them a reminder. So they're sure to remember that this is on their calendar, that they signed up. They'll be more likely to attend if you remind them. My suggestion is to actually remind them twice. Once one week before the program, and once within 24 hours of when the program is going to happen. I use this method all the time in my work. It works really well. The third thing is to create fewer programs, but make programs of higher quality. I think one of the things we forget is that our programs are in competition with tons of other activities happening in our community. So we have to make them valuable for people to come and participate in them. So I have a bunch of other tips for program promotion. I expand on that last point a bit in an older post from Super Library Marketing, like a year old. 
I'll put a link to that down in the show description if you're watching on YouTube or in the comments if you're watching on LinkedIn, plus some other videos that I've created over the years about how to increase your program attendance. I hope that's helpful. Listen, I know that there are lots of you out there who have great tips on how to get people to your programs. Let's share those tips down in the comments and get a conversation going. And while you're looking down there, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, please click on the subscribe button. If you happen to be watching on LinkedIn, click follow so you'll get a notification every time I post a video. All right, it's time for kudos. I promised you I would share a kudos that came in recently um, to us through the library marketing tab on Super Library Marketing. It comes from Chelsea at the Loudit District Library that's in Michigan. Um, she wanted to tell me about something that her library did during the month of February that she thinks your library might want to do next year. So they celebrated Kindness Month at her library in February. And instead of just celebrating Random Acts of Kindness Day, which is on February 17th, this library encouraged their staff and patrons to celebrate kindness and community connection all month long. And they had like a bunch of different promotions, social media, email, TV sliders, their website, physical posters. They encouraged people to commit a, a random act of kindness, um, especially one that is sponsoring books that were lost or damaged by another patron. And they had really good feedback during the first week. They had 20 book sponsors, which is a great idea. So I'm going to put a link to a blog post that they wrote about this program down in the show description or in the comments if you're watching on LinkedIn, as well as a link to a Facebook post that they put up to promote this. I want you to bookmark those and think about doing this next February at your library. Good job, Chelsea and the staff at Loudit District Library, and thank you for sharing that kudos with us. That's all I have for this episode, but I've got lots more advice for library marketing on my channel. If you're interested in that, click on the next video and I'll see you there.